Logan everyone. Today I am going to be swatching some handmade watercolor for you all from this company called Deep Deep Light, which is located in the UK. I got just a small order from them to try them out and you'll be trying them out with me. There are uh, three little colors in this sweet little tin. I kind of like the little tin where it's just a little um, slide off cap. They also sent me some sample uh, dot cards for different colors, so I'm gonna swatch those as well for you. You may notice that I have quite a bit of red on my hands. I just got done messing with a red ink and a fountain pen and I kind of forgot that I'd done that and then started this video. So I'm not gonna stop, I'm just gonna keep going. Uh, and I'm gonna be swatching the watercolors on my usual pentallic paper. This is a pentallic uh, field book that I'm going to be swatching on. I will, let's see, let's back up a little bit so that we can get those in the frame. I think that'll probably work well. And I'm going to be using this Rhapsody sable brush that I purchased at Jerry's Artorama for quite a steal when I got it, but um, their prices do vary. I will put a link to this product as well. And then off to the side, I have a little pot of water to rinse off my brush and a little paper towel to dab off any excess water. So let's go ahead and get started here. I think I'm going to do the swatch card colors first. And then after that, I will open up the, um, the individual half pans that I have here and swatch those. So let's go ahead and I'm wetting my brush off to the side here. Let's start with, I'm not gonna pre-wet these, but uh, let's go ahead and start with this golden gold ochre. Different brands re-wet um, in various ways. Some re-wet really, really well, and some take a little bit more work. It looks like this might require a little bit more work to get that color off of there. Actually, I'm gonna just leave it like that so we have a little bit of a fade there. So that's golden gold ochre. This next one is Potter's Pink, which I always kind of like to have a variety of different brands of Potter's Pink because they usually are all very different. So let's see what this one looks like. So far, like I said, a little bit difficult to re-wet Although this Potter's Pink is actually a little bit better than that, um, I'm gonna get a little bit more water here, than that Golden Ochre, which is kind of interesting because Potter's Pink can often be a little hard to re-wet. Okay, I think that's actually a pretty good representation there. It's actually a very nice Potter's Pink. And then I believe that this is a somewhat iridescent color. This is called Silver tough and let's see let's see how this goes yeah very very light I would say of these three the potter's pink is probably the most successful as far as um, having a lot of pigment that is easy to get off of the paper here I added a lot of water so you're gonna get bit of water there. This is actually really pretty though. And I can see some shimmer there. I will, um, when this is dry, I will tilt it a little bit more so that you can see some of that shimmer. It's a very, very light color. And I think intentionally so. Okay. And the three colors that I purchased intentionally, those were samples, are pretty dark colors. So, oh good, they are labeled on the back. So this one is Juniper Shadow, which is a very nice deep green. I only got a few because these colors are pretty expensive and um, I do have quite an extensive watercolor collection and I didn't think that I needed um, a whole lot of new colors. Let's see, so this is 
something blue, J blue, I wanna say. I think that's what that says. I can't remember what the color was. And actually two of these came in a set, which was a little more economical to get. Um, I think it was these two that came in the set, this uh, blue and the juniper. And then the other one was an add-on, as far as I can remember. So these do look pretty smooth for handmade watercolor. Okay, this one is cedar teal. And this was kind of the color that um, drew me to their colors in the first place. So we'll save that one for last. We'll do the best for last. Or my uh, biggest preference for last, let's say that. Okay. So I'll do these here and I'll just go down this way. I'll try to do a pretty decent swatch. So I'm just adding the water here, letting it sit in there a little bit. This one does seem to re-wet a little bit better than a couple of the samples. Yeah, and it's definitely much, much deeper. That's gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna add water at this point. to draw it down. That's lovely. Okay, so that was that juniper shadow. And then this one is that J blue. So I'm gonna do the same thing, get quite a decent amount of water, let it soak in there. That's really pretty too. Just looks like I got a little bit of that, <laughs> a little bit of cross-contamination there. And um, I think that the pigment information was listed on the website, uh, but I don't have it handy here. So I will put a link to the website so that you can see all of the different offerings and you can see the pigment information there. These are not single pigments, they are a mix but uh, they are really, really beautiful. Okay, so this is the Cedar Teal. Really, really beautiful. And I do wonder, I'm just adding a little bit more water to this one. I do wonder if, uh, if I'd added more water to the others. Oh, and I got a little drop on this one too if they would have re-wet a little bit easier, because these are really easy to re-wet, these other colors. And then I'm going to get some extra water there. These are gorgeous. So they are heavily granulating, so you'll see that. At least these two are. This one is probably not as granulating, but still granulating there. Those are really, really beautiful. And I just rinsed off my brush. And what I'm also going to do is I have this uh, little Sharpie marker that is ultra fine that I always write on my watercolor half pans so I know what's in them. So this one is Juniper Shadow. This one is, what is it? Let me make sure I have that right. J Blue, I think is the name. Lovely. And then this one is Cedar Teal. All right, those are just absolutely gorgeous. So a little less impressive <laughs> on these samples. I actually think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit more pigment into that golden ochre, just add a little bit more water, see if that helps at all. 
a little bit perhaps. Yeah, so that's a little better. Still fairly light though. And this potter's pink, I think wet eventually just as well as these and you get a pretty good representation there. And now that one is wet again, but these are fairly dry and I think you might be able to see, yeah, so some of that is, is it still a little bit wet, but, but that sheen that you're seeing is mostly the shimmer that is in there on this particular one here. And once it dried, it actually looks a little bit darker. It's actually a really pretty color. It would be very nice for doing some, you know, atmospheric stuff. And then these three are just absolutely gorgeous. I'm really, really happy with these. I, I, Definitely think I have a lot of uses for them. And although this one, the Cedar Teal, was the one that originally drew me to the company, I think that the uh, J Blue is actually my favorite of these three. But um, they're all really pretty. All right. Well, that's all I had for you today. Uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and label these before I go. So this is deep, deep light watercolor. And then this one is golden gold ochre. This is potter's pink. And then this one is Silver Tough. Yeah, as that one dried, it really got a lot more interesting. Really cool. Okay, and then this one is Juniper Shadow. J Blue. and then uh, Cedar Teal. Okay. And even just while I've been uh, talking and labeling, a lot more of that granulation came out as it dried. Really, really beautiful. I love granulating watercolors. So these are really, really nice. This one's still a little wet on the top. I did add quite a bit of water. Um, and I think most granulating colors actually work better with more water. So that was a good call, I think. Really, really pretty. Okay. And then here is this one mostly dry again. Oh, it actually does have some gold in it. Okay, that might have also been why it was a little hard to rewet. I couldn't see that it had gold in it. Oh, but now that it's drying with the second layer, I can see there's definitely gold in there. That explains a lot because metallic colors um, sometimes are a little bit harder to rewet. So that makes a lot more sense. Um, and then this potter's pink, which is super gorgeous as well. The silver tough, which like I said, when it dried, it, that's all dry now. So all the, the shimmer that you're seeing is the actual shimmer itself, the silver shimmer there. And this has uh, a gold shimmer that's not wet anymore. That's just the gold shimmer that you're seeing there. All right. Well, I'm glad I went back and added some more pigment there because I really do think that I could recommend any of these now based on um, the end result. They're super, super gorgeous. Um, all right. And if you want to get a sweet little package from the UK, <laughs> I will put the link below so that you can check this watercolor company out. I am not affiliated in any way with this company and I am not sponsored in this post. This was just me getting these watercolors to try them out and sharing them with you. All right. Well, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. 
I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.